The Taipei Fine Arts Museum has two important works in its collection that Yan Sui Long painted during his time in France. One of those works, Montsouris Park, was created in 1931, and it was selected for the Autumn Salon that year in Paris. This work was featured in a newspaper article that was written by Lin Pan Long about the achievement. And that offered a lot of encouragement to young people in Taiwan at the time. The subject of this painting is a landscape of Montsouris Park, but it was painted in a style similar to that of Fujishima Takeji, who divided his canvases up into large swaths of color. The painting also features several strolling women, like the slender modern figures painted by the artist Kies van Dongen. This work features a metropolitan scene that is both peaceful and modern. Yan Sui Long painted Luxembourg Park in 1932. This painting has a greater depth of field. Naturally, it features a lot of city people who are either sitting or strolling in the park, and there are also some beautiful French metal chairs. It's important to mention that a lot of these large parks contained dark forests. It looks like a patch of green, but it contains a lot of beautiful layers of color. Those needed to be painstakingly added to the painting, layer by layer. This is one of his earlier works. Actually, both pieces display a simplicity and an element of formalism. That's something which Fujishima Takeji shared with him. You can see from the way in which he painted the clouds that there are close connections to the style of Fujishima's works of art during the Japanese period. Now let's move on to some of the Taipei Fine Arts Museum's more recent acquisitions of some of Yan Sui Long's later works, which feature Taiwanese Aborigines. One of them, a young girl from Rukai, was featured on a postage stamp. In the painting, a young Rukai girl is seen formally dressed in traditional clothing. It's a natural setting, which is located on a mountain in Sandimen. There's a man-made building in the painting. And Yan Sui Long painted some seasonal flowers, grasses, fruits, and vegetables. And the girl is holding millet in her hand. And by painting it this way, Yan was conveying cultural and anthropological observations within his work. This is an important gesture in terms of sharing cultural heritage. And he felt the need to pass it along to others. He had a lot of friends who conducted field research into Taiwan's indigenous cultures, and the findings were quite extensive and in-depth. However, few people in the arts at the time in Taiwan paid much attention to such matters. So Yan Sui Long put considerable effort into changing that, and he created a metamorphosis. He also went to great lengths to capture the island, which is home to the Dao people, Orchid Island. He wanted to capture all of its natural beauty, especially the vast ocean and the sunlight. He felt the sunlight was very important, and that he himself had been blessed by the sun. Taiwan had offered him so much, and it was important for him to give back to society. For Yan Sui Long, and also for Taiwan, the natural source of energy that comes from the sunlight, it can be viewed as a sort of a selfless offering. So in Yan Sui Long's painting of Orchid Island, he spent a great deal of time and effort on painting the sunset. If you've ever seen the image of a sunset reflecting on the surface of the ocean, you'll know that it can be a very pure and moving sight without even using any words. You can convey the overwhelming beauty of both mountain rivers and ocean waters, and that place where anthropology and natural beauty intersect. Working together to draw an emotional response from the viewer. As for the iconic wooden canoes of Orchid Island, Yan Sui Long approached them from an interesting perspective, that of a lover of anthropology. He managed to perfectly capture a three-dimensional view of the unique shape of the vessels. 
He did an impeccable job of painting them and of capturing the curvature of the boats. The three-dimensional boats offer a stark contrast with the ocean and the sky in the background, which are more two-dimensional in nature, and the pebbles on the ground also appear to be flat, as do the cactuses which he loved to paint. For Yin, the cactuses hold a special meaning, like cactuses which bloom even in the barren ground of the desert, although this is not exactly the desert. They stretch upward as if reaching for a higher purpose. He painted a lot of hidden meanings into his works, and he loved painting subjects like this. So in 1984, he painted a landscape of Orchid Island on a large urn. Because it's such a large urn, and he did a wonderful job with the painting, he signed his work in two different places. Unfortunately, the urn was damaged during the 921 earthquake. The owner, Mr. Lin, later donated the piece to the Taipei Fine Arts Museum, and the museum found an expert who spent many months repairing it. Today, this unique piece serves as a nice contrast with many of Yan Shui Long's other works, which are oil paintings on canvas. Mm -hmm.